Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, as I said, the first slide, uh, uh, um, the owner is Reza Realty LNC, which is me, and uh, also I'm the one who's going to be developing that site. Hopefully, if we get all the approval. I have here with me Ms. Christy Adona. Christy, you want to introduce yourself, or should I just? I'm Christy Adana from Silverberg's Lantis. Um, we're assisting. Just need the mic, yeah. yeah. Christy Adana from Silverberg's Lantis in Tarrytown. Uh, we're assisting Mr. Mirandi with um, developing the concepts for this project. I've been working on this for a little bit, and I, I have had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Duquesne about it a little bit in the past. So we're happy to be here this evening. Douglas Cutler, Douglas Cutler Architects. Uh, we're the architects behind this project, and uh, we can speak later. And um, I also don't have Gail Bressler and Roger Harry who are going to be doing the financing and putting the financing together for this project. So they are not here because they thought we, we don't need them. All right. Um, well, the concept is let's convert this into an affordable workforce housing. It's something that the county needed, the federal government need housing, for affordable housing. So we came up with this idea of converting this existing, I would call it a historic building, some people call it the eyesore, whatever you want to call it, convert it to, to affordable unit, housing unit. And it's going to be also portion of the 10% is going to be uh, uh, allocated for the veteran. So it's affordable housing, 10% veterans housing? Yes. This is the plan right now. All right, so uh, this is a slide shows the aerial view, which is right all on, now off 9A and crawl across the Brookfield, uh, I guess uh, junkyard they call it, or, or Brook or an auto zone. And next is Dunkin' Donut. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that area. That's, that's what it is. All right, I mean, this is uh, basically I put this up to show what is affordable. According to the government, uh, affordable if family has spent no more than 30% of their income to live there. Is 30% AMI? Oh, no. Is that what you said? It's no. 60%. 60. 60 right. Okay. But without spending more than 30% of your gross income. Right. Okay. All right, and So basically what we're saying that we're going to convert that 100% to legible household that earn at or below 60% of the Westchester County area median, AMI. That's what that so one said. Are you doing affordable housing or are you doing workforce housing? Right, well, right now we call it the affordable slash workforce. affordable and there's a percentage on workforce. Most of them is going to be workforce, but uh, definitely around 60% 60, 60 is going to be workforce and 40% is going to be 10% um, uh, veterans and 30% is going to be affordable. I'm sorry, can we do those numbers again? You yeah. said 60% is affordable? No, workforce. Workforce. 30% is going to be affordable. And 30% is affordable. And 10% veteran. Regardless of income. Well, they got to be qualified because there is a qualification procedure they have to go through in order to be able to uh, get uh, that rental. Oh, so uh, in it's addition a to being veterans, it's also, they're also going to qualify for the affordable or the workforce. Yes. Okay. And if what percentage of the apartments or what numbers of the units will be right now we should affordable and Oh, but I didn't break it down there, but uh, I, right now we're looking to build 100 units over there in that location. So, so 100 units of affordable or workforce housing. Right. The combination is, uh, is going to be, you can break it down, 10% is going to be 10 of them, with 10 of the units is going to be for veterans. 60% uh, uh, is going to be workforce housing. So it's is, a combination? Right. Okay. Right. And uh, you've been in touch with the state. Do you feel that uh, the state would come through with the funding? Well, uh, the first meeting, actually, this, believe it or not, Paul, this thing started from uh, when I first met this uh, gentleman from the 
county, what's, what, is, what was his name? Do you remember? The well, anyhow. From the county? Yes. From the county, uh, we, we had a meeting, and this uh, idea of uh, affordability actually came through that uh, side. Uh, who is the gentleman from the county? Uh, we had a meeting, but that Ted was. Ted Lineback? Who? Ted Lineback? Mm, no, Ted no. doesn't like that, but I can get the but I, from I, the I guess for the purpose of this meeting today, you want to see if the town board will be open to uh, to pursuing this, and if we're receptive, then we could work, you know, with you and with the county yes. to um, and the state to basically get the funding, you know, in place. Yes. So the fir the fir the problem is the first step is we have to say, you know what, if um, you could get the funding, would be open to this, um, and then you know we would all work together to see if we can make this happen. Because I think right now, you know, you came up with the concept, you know, a number of years ago and nothing happened. So, uh, you know, it's really not, you know, we, I, I don't think we need to have commitments right now. But, uh, but, but again, you know, I, I do think that there's definitely a need for affordable housing and workforce housing. And, you know, just like we've done in the past with other projects, if, um, you know, the community is supportive, the town board is supportive. We're all working together. You know, we'll, we'll reach out to the village of Elmsford. If they're supportive, then we'll go to the state and we'll go to the county and we'll, we'll do whatever we can to make this happen. Yes, and actually the email that you sent out to uh, Mayor of Elmsford, he was very supportive, uh, reply back uh, on the first time that I asked you to right. set up this meeting. He was very supportive. But then, uh, yeah, yeah, the idea is that, Paul. Uh, we, we're looking to see what we're going to get support from this group and county is already behind it. Financing, we have uh, Gail and Roger who worked e extensively before even I came here. They, they broke it down to where they can get these money from, including HUD, bonds, and uh, low income housing tax credit. Uh, they, they, they have already that set up, but we gotta see when we're gonna do that. Uh, the market is changing, and so gonna have to wait on this and, and this is going to be within like walking distance of the new shop right isn't it absolutely there, it is a walking it's to San Club and across it shop right yes right so there's really an advantage to res when you're looking at uh, you know affordability and the benefits from a planning standpoint if you have affordable housing that's within walking distance of a supermarket walking distance of uh, you know Sam's Club uh, and in the area that's right now somewhat blighted, I think that this could be, you know, an advantage because this is probably like the ugliest um, section in the town. Yep. You know, I mean, every time I drive there, you know, it's 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 it's, a, it's, it's depressing. So yep. if you have quality new housing, maybe it will result in um, okay. in like a revitalization of that area mm -hmm. and other uh, quality developments. Uh, you know, being built. That's just my own personal feeling. It's, what it certainly has direct. Excuse me. Certainly has direct access to two eighty seven and eighty seven. Is it on a bus line? Is that yeah. a bus line? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, you have the bus line there across mm -hmm. the street. You have a, a ten minute bus line to the White Plain uh, bus depot. And uh, Paul, as you said, I've been. We own that place for. I mean, for almost forty years. Mm -hmm. And this what? hasn't changed. This is a game changer. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying I prove it, but I'm saying it, it is a game changer, as you said. Right. What That's going to change this whole neighborhood. What kind of provision for parking are you making? Uh, we have 120 cars, and uh, oh, this doesn't seem like it's, oh yeah, I guess it's it is working. It's and uh, the advantage is that we have a change of grade, so the rear street back here is uh, about one level up. So we can enter parking in the back, which you can see a peak over here. Um, and then on the main road, we have access for parking here. So the uh, traffic is sort of distributed rather than being concentrated. And then this is opposite another street, which doesn't show on the rendering. And then... Um, so it's going to be underground parking? Yes. Some portion is going to be on the ground, the other portion is going to be on the first level. Right, there's a little bit that pokes out on the side, and to minimize the impact, we have ivy, we have this lattice work with ivy growing on it, so it doesn't look 
you know, institutional. And uh, that's what I tried to do with the architecture was to break it up so that there's this mass here and then there's these wings and then of course we've got a green roof uh, so we want to bring the living to the roof it reduces the heat island effect we have solar that could uh, pick up on uh, some of the common area spaces hallways so on add to the grid everybody knows about you know, getting green, and um, then uh, we have some landscaping along the front here. We have a five-foot setback, and even uh, on the residential side, we try to incorporate the ivy wall uh, to cover some of the parking. We've gotten um, in this area, you know, some flo you know major flooding. Um, is there uh, sometimes in the past when there's been. Uh, new developments. Uh, the developer has improved the drainage. If um, if this would be approved, uh, would there be any uh, uh, flood, you know, benefit, benefits in terms of addressing the flooding problem in that area, like drainage-wise? I think. Well, uh, my client is an engineer, civil engineer, and I'm sure we could put some well, uh, cultex or some underwater storage that can release. Yeah, we, we can, and also what we were looking. You need to talk into the microphone. But, but what I was looking to do also part of this uh, drainage uh, issue and in general uh, keeping the storm from going to the wastewater treatment and City of New York is doing that, they call it bioswell. I don't know if you people are familiar with bioswell. We're going to be taking section of the sidewalk along here, maybe even past our uh, property and build this bioswell, what, is, what, is, what bioswell is. Every time it rains, instead of going to the catch basin, so we will go here, we plant, and the water is going to percolate down there. It will prevent it from going into the catch basin, which we know we're going to end up in a treatment plant. Most of the time, they don't have the ability to treat it. They're going to open up, it, open up the gate and send it to the river, the, the area, which we don't want that. So that's one of the plans we're going to do for a drainage solution. And we have a bunch of other uh, ideas that we're going to throw at the time of the final design. Well, did, well, no, sorry. I was just wondering what the cross street is that you would access the parking at the back from 9 a.m. Sure. Um, yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. This is I know the, the street behind is North Lawn Avenue, but North I North Lawn. Okay. Yeah, but I I don't know the one by Carwell. The one that's one way to access it. Go back and try to go to North Lawn Avenue. I, I don't want to call it right across the uh, sound call. That is true. This represents on the Dunkin' Donuts here, just as an orientation, but that's on the north side. Okay. So, so uh, just, we've, we've had you here before talking about different proposals. What concerns me is, you know, we come with pr pretty pictures and talking about how you're going to do 100% affordable. And uh, you've spoken to the county, you don't remember who. I can't give but, but you, but you have a history. Yeah, no. yeah, no, no, you have uh, a his uh, just please. Right? You have a history of code violations on your building over the years. And that's very frustrating to us and the building department. And so when people say it's, you know, run down, you've done conversions of residential to or commercial to residential and vice versa without permits. I, I would like to be sure that this is actually going to be an affordable housing project and doesn't get built. You don't get the money to finance affordable housing and you basically get a windfall on having violated our code for many years. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, do you, are you coming in with a, a description like most people do of what the current zoning is and what variances you would need in order to do this yes. or, or, or text amendments? So I could speak to that, that okay. this is going to require, and that's part of the reason why we're here this afternoon, this evening, is um, this is certainly going to require some sort of zone text amendment and or zone change from this board. Um, that's something that we've known for a while. Um, the property is currently in the CB district. 
which does allow mixed use developments, does allow residential, but certainly not to the level of density that we're proposing here. Um, so this is something that we did have preliminary conversations. I have looked at the comprehensive plan and a lot of the themes that were referenced earlier regarding affordable and workforce housing, access to public transportation and walkability are certainly things that are in your comprehensive plan and are consistent with this proposal. So we're comfortable with, or, with the concept that um, you know, if this is something that the board were willing to see go further, um, that we could put together something. There is currently the M174 district that would allow the level of density um, and actually allows greater density than what is being proposed here. The problem is the way the code currently works is that there's a big gap in those density limits. So we wouldn't really need to go to M174, but if you went to the one that was lower than that, and um, perhaps Gary could speak to that, um, but then, then it wouldn't accommodate it. So we could either try to work in the 174 zone, um, in which case we would need a zone, text, a zone change to that zone. However, we would probably then also need variances because I don't believe that this project would comply with the setback and some of the other bulk requirements. Or we could try to work with the board to come up with a new zone. And I understand that there are some other affordable housing projects in the town that were part of urban renewal. And so there may be some way to kind of create a zone that can accommodate a, a bunch of different properties that, that may tie up some loose ends for the town. In the past, um, when we've been dealing with housing, sometimes you know we'll have a developer come in here or a property owner, and then they flip the property after they get the approvals, you know, they sell the property. Um, it, are you planning to be the developer, or are you are you looking at the possibility of selling, um, you know, and then having somebody else, um, you know, build it? No, uh, Paul. As I said on the top uh, at the beginning, I said I'm going to be the engineer and owner and the developer right there. It says the engineer developer. I'm going to be developing it. Right. Paul just. Uh, the truth is out there it is not beneficial for me to go affordable. Yep. I just want to throw this out there. I can keep this place. It's perfectly legal, by the way, just to answer some of your question. Since 2010, that we converted to legal eight family, it's perfectly legal. Everything is good, and we don't have any violation. But that's not the point. The point is, I decide to convert this to affordable to pay back to the community after 40 years of work, you know, being here in this town. That's the reason. And there's no money in it for me when I do convert that property into affordable poll. It's absolutely no money because everything is gonna be paid off by tax bond, by bond and taxpayer and, and other variable heart, and those money has to be returned back. The only way there's money in it is if I get to manage it. That's the only way. Well, I like the idea that here you have like a, it's so hard to get affordable housing built anywhere. And every time there's a proposal, it's, you know, half the time it's controversial. So this is, you know, a hundred units of affordable housing, which would be, which we don't have right and now, which would be, I think, a fantastic asset. Absolutely. And I also feel that you're taking a blighted area um, and you're creating an opportunity for that whole area mm -hmm. eventually to become, you know, more attractive. My wife uh, uh, lived at the, you know, the condos there when she was, uh, when they just had built it, you know, mm -hmm. years, decades ago. So there was always, you know, uh, ugly, um, you know, some River Road was always ugly. So this is, to me, the first opportunity uh, to have something that's really, you know, you know, really nice. Um, so I definitely would love to see, uh, something like this happened. The question that I have is, let's assume that the board in concept, you know, likes us, you know, and we put in the control. So the concerns, you know, Francis has, you know, that everybody knows it's going to be affordable, it's going to stay affordable. Uh, you know, there's no wiggle room. Um, uh, uh, you know, so we definitely are going to make sure that the promises made are, are kept. Garrett, you know, what would be the next steps um, you know, to sort of, you know, what, what's like step two, one, two, three, um, you know, what has to be done? Okay, so, um, Gary. Sir. Yes, thank you. And um, as with any zone change, as the board knows, um, before you even consider step one, I think you want to think about a zone change in the, in, through the lens of the comprehensive plan. And uh, I do believe that um, there are enough, um, 
policies in the comprehensive plan supportive of affordable housing that um, th this concept, you know, you could, you could entertain it as, 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 a, as a development proposal. Um, I didn't get the sense that when the applicant or this gentleman came in a couple years ago uh, with a straight uh, market rate uh, building that the town board we, was supportive. I didn't get that sense. Um, and I think if you are supportive now, the fact that it's 100% affordable does put it in sort of a special consideration class. I also think it's significant that it exists with multifamily um, because from a planning perspective, I say to myself, um, you know, what happens if, you know, two, two, two units down, the second you bless this concept, um, why can't they? Um, so I think what differentiates this property is it's the lone uh, multifamily building on the block, if you will. Therefore, I do think the board can consider it as a standalone project. So I don't think you would need to amend the comprehensive plan to entertain this concept. I don't think it would be spot zoning for the reasons stated that you have multifamily, you're introducing affordable housing, which is needed. It's in a walkable area, get becoming more walkable with mass transit options. So I do think it's consistent in concept with the comp plan. I don't think you would need to amend the comp plan. Um, so having said that, yes, <laughs> if the board is supportive of the concept, yes, we would have to think about what zoning mechanism would enable this. Clearly the CB closed business, the existing zoning district would not enable such development. Um, if the board felt that there has been, like with West Hab, the board did rezone a uh, less than half acre parcel to M174, did it under a uh, condition negative declaration, which said, despite the fact that the M174 would allow, you know, um, 100 units or something on that order on that site, the board felt comfortable with 28 units on the West Hab site, so you could, did a condition negative deck in that instance, and that's how the town board rezoned the site at that time, and there were um, deed restrictions put on the property so that they cannot come back. Um, so if you did go the one M74, M174, I do feel West Hab provides a, um, through the seeker process, a mechanism to control the level of density that the board would be comfortable with. Certainly, you know, we have, you know, not nearly enough information to understand if this site has the capacity for 100 uh, units. You know, we want to be cognizant of the back block, which does, as you can see in that aerial photo, homes. have single family homes. So, um, you know, whether it's sh shadow studies um, or just direct outreach to those residents to get their input, which we certainly will do um, regardless, but we certainly would need more information to understand, you know, the true carrying capacity of this site. Um, or as was stated, yes, there, there could be consideration for a, a new creation of a new zoning district between M174 and M25, um, which, you know, uh, maybe you don't have to do a condition of neg negative declaration if that was the case. Um, the reference to the urban renewal um, is the uh, Manhattan Avenue multifamily affordable buildings. Uh, they are presently zoned urban renewal. We have thought about a potential rezoning kind of run into the same concept there. If to eliminate the urban renewal zoning district uh, on Manhattan Avenue for the multifamily buildings, M174, if you went to that zone, you know, that those are big sites, you know, that could allow a thousand units on that site. Might not make sense unless you can uh, conditioned negative declaration process. So a lot to think about, but um, I really think what's really the board will want to think about is, you know, do, are you comfortable with the concept you know you don't have to that doesn't mean the number of units but uh, the concept of an affordable housing project uh, at this site affordable housing is good right yeah I mean, that's it's like mom and apple pie at, the, at this point it's you know does that actually fit on the property will it actually be affordable housing you know those are the kind of the things that have to get worked out but would we be able to go the next step we also have a condition uh, for all affordable housing that it has to be a D, you know when we get you know the grants or whatever that it has to be for 99 years that's been the policy for the town so it can't be affordable for like 20 years and then and then go market because we really want to yeah, keep it affordable right. Well, right. Uh, but uh, i'm saying if would we be able to is this sort of like a consensus that the concept uh merits going to the next step and um, you know we could then ask Gara to work with you 
and um, and then we could start moving this, you know, moving, you know, this along. Because again, I think it's wow. like you said. I'm just he hearing this for the first time, sitting down today. Did, right. Did, did we, you, do we have any paperwork or anything documented that we? Could no, I'm saying maybe what we could do is if the board. If and you're asking, concept, are we in favor of affordable housing? I, I think the answer is yes. Right. I think we're all. Maybe what we could do is, if you know that in concept we, you know, we, you know, we basically are favorably inclined, then you know you could then, you know. Start spending some money and 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 coming up with a more detailed proposal, and then we could then start the you know the serious review process. You, know, you just didn't want to throw money into something if the board would say, you know, we're rejecting it before we even uh, yeah, have so a discussion. You're absolutely right, uh, Paul. And uh, we we did uh, spend quite a few dollars here to get even to this point, and I'm willing to go that route. I just have to know what exactly you want for the next step. Okay. You can give me whatever detail you want. And then we could, when then you're when you're ready with something more detailed, then you know we could cut. You know you could look at the numbers. You could look at the traffic impact. The you know the impact to the immediate the, the immediate neighbors. Then we'll, you could say, oh, maybe it's not a hundred, maybe it's ninety or whatever. Um, and then you come up with a, a plan, a more detailed one. And then we could you know be serious about it. But you know I I really believe that. You know, I mean, when I was at Fordham, you know, I studied urban planning, and I just think that from a planning standpoint, this is, there's so many positives to this. Yeah. May I ask a question? I see you did some preliminary sketch outs um, for layout. What size units are these? One, two, three, uh, a mixture of? Uh, um, um, I think I have it here, Doc. Hold on one second. The one that you have. Well, I break it down into floors, but um, uh, I don't have a sum total. I, 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 uh, uh, I There's a mixture of studios, of course, yeah. one bedroom and be, two bedrooms. It's going to be 30 unit uh, studio up to 500 square feet space and 45 <coughs> unit of uh, 650 average square feet. For one bedroom and two bedrooms, it's going to be 25 units to bed on the bedroom. Parking, landscaping, community room, you can have a gym, fitness center, washer, and dryer, rooftop line, and what's the water down there? But there's a breaking point, Paul. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a point that if you go below that, it will not be viable to go that route. Well, what is that point? I think the anything from 65 and up. The way to go forward. But right now, as is, it's going to be around 42 million dollars uh, right now. This is an estimate right now. So, you, so you're saying 65 and up, it's workable. You picked 100. Yes. Yeah. How did you pick 100? No, anything above that, you cut down the number of market rate uh, and affordable. The percentage is going to change. But there is no, there's no market rate. No, but it would be beneficial to me to go that route rather than, yeah. Well, that's what we got to lock down. Yes. You know, that's no, what, no, you I know, said, I'm skeptical because I've been here for 16 years yes. and this is, you know, you've been here a couple of times. Yes. I, I want to go 100. That's what is very clear. Is but but what is that number based on? The number was based on the number of financing that the, my consultant did and he came up with that number. That, what that breaking point? So in the review process, for example, if it was somewhat less, could you give more of a buffer to the single family homes that are behind you, which depending on, and I haven't looked, but depending how the, you know, the sun rises and falls, may be in darkness because of the height of your building compared to their 25-foot high home. One of the, one of the better videos, if you look at this uh, rendering right behind you right now, I mean, one of, if you, the, the, the height there, don't you correct me, uh, it is fairly, even though it goes up to sixth level, it's still fairly close because of the elevation difference between the front 9A and the long North Lawn Avenue. 
we can uh, still manage to uh, build this uh, with a number of cars, 120 cars. Yeah, we, we would also need to know things like what, you're in, what you think that the traffic density would be, um, are the residents going to be using public transportation, how many children are you expecting because that affects the number of children in schools. So these are, this is all the information that, among other things, that we're going to need. And that view that you just showed us, was the tree on your property or on the, the single-family homeowner's property? That's, uh, that's in our property. Uh, right past the tree uh, becomes a single family that is right there. Uh, could you put it back up on the screen, please? It's One of the challenges is that we have just enough width for um, a double-loaded parking. And if, if the buffer is increased, then we're unable to have legal parking and then it might put the whole project into jeopardy because we'll just won't have enough units and won't have enough parking so we're you know we're up against the wall no pun intended so so what is that in the picture that we see views from north lawn avenue the left picture what is on the extreme right in white what is that that's the uh, single family house that's right and so you're saying that the tree that we see mm -hmm. that looks like it's giving great separation is on your property? This is the I estimate, yes. This is rendering right now, I estimate that. Which means that that house was built on the rear property line? No, that house, the way it shows, the front of the house is on North Lawn Avenue, right. and, and then at the backyard of the house, it dropped down. To so we're seeing the side yard. That's on the side. Yeah, that's in the side yard uh, of the residence. It's just it's arbitrary. Yeah. Basically, about how many feet is that? I think it would be the, the single family residences, tree in the side yard. I believe the building footprint encompasses a uh, majority of the um, rear width towards the, the, the back block. Mm -hmm. So we have a five yard, or I'm a five foot setback uh, from the property line and to then, the of market. course, there's five foot setback to what? From this property here to uh, to the parking to, to the parking and to the face of the building. Yes. So the face of the building is five feet in. Right. Now, I, you know, again, I, we were very cognizant of that, so that's why. I mean, it increases a little bit down here uh, to minimize the uh, impact of the wall. We, you know, we did that ivy wall which I think is very pretty and it, and it softens it and it gives green. Blending the label. Did you see So whatever documentation you can send us, that would be really helpful so that we could take a look at it. So I'm just an inquisitive town clerk and I'm, I don't have a vote on this matter at all, but based on the fact that 75% of your projected um, units are either studio or one bedroom, would it be reasonable to assume that you are basically targeting workforce individuals, people who may be college graduates, um, people who are looking for um, a, 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 a first time a place to live that they can afford, um, and and a, a less of an emphasis on families with children who may impact the school district. Is, is, that, is it reasonable to assume that? Uh, mm, well, we have 45 units, but it's going to be two one bedroom, 25. Oh, okay. Yeah, 25 uh, units going to be two bedrooms. Okay, 25 and, to. And look, this is, this is a study that was done just recently for, mm -hmm. uh, for, from the town of uh, the that's just a county and white plain area. Okay. And we really came up with that idea that these are the people who are looking for safety. Okay. And, but that could change maybe within a year or next year, it's going to change. Maybe that number can change. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, before we get the final design, we can increase right. the number of two bedrooms. Okay. Well, these reviews always take time, yeah. and there's a lot of give and take, and it goes mm -hmm. to the planning board, mm -hmm. and it goes through the planning process. So yeah, right now, I think the main thing is that the board seems in concept to like 
the the idea. Great. You know, we're asking Garrett to work with you to do the next steps, and then mm -hmm. we're going to have to come back, and then you could present a more um, a more detailed you know proposal, and then we, you know we'll have to have the planning process review the numbers, uh, the impact to neighbors, the traffic, and all that, and then. And you know, hopefully, we'll be able to make something positive happen. Great. Do you have something that just shows the property without, you know, the uh, uh, tax map or something like that? The eight, the eight drawing A two looks like it has the property line in uh, dotted hatch. Which drawing you to? Well, you, I just, well, have, we to, don't I just have pretty oh, good yeah. ideas. Yeah. I don't have that. Yeah. A2? No, we don't have I see A2 here. I the saw it on the screen. Do you have more the copies? The thing that we have is that uh, Reza Mirandi, new affordable workforce development at 172. Right. So no, that's all we have. No, that's the part of the presentation. That's, yeah, we don't have any. We don't have anything we to have review. Nothing. Not oh. to, yeah, to us in advance, so we will be prepared. I can make a copy of each. Yeah, this is the floor plan, which is great. Right there. There's a ramp that goes down into the first level of parking. Uh, That's it's from that. level. Yeah. Um, if you want to call it the street level, is actually uh, just a half We're level. Going to the park. And then we go down another full level uh, for subterranean. So uh, the building is up in the air, uh, say about six, seven feet, which gives privacy to the units. You don't want the people on the street looking into your unit. So it's up, you know, it's like a brownstone where you elevate your the main living floor. Great, so thank you. Thank you. Did any of these flood in any of the recent storm? Did, did, no, okay. Again, these are going based on the history of Are these for property. us to keep? Yes, you can keep them. Thank you. came up to the middle of 9A. Did not even get to the first floor. If you want to keep right, we are right on the sidewalk. Did not get it. Yeah. And we did a, we did a survey of the property. I'm sorry, it got to the sidewalk, but it didn't no, get to the No, it didn't get to the sidewalk. It, it got to the, the central lane of the Route 98. That's the highest it got. It's across the street. We also got flooded, but we didn't put. We got the zone, uh, flood zone uh, map, and that was something that we get the right time. Well, all of this will be studied because it's going to be an extensive uh, yes. secret process. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Would you like to keep them? Thank you. Thank you.